Welcome, everyone, to Life Beyond Six Feet. I'm Damian from RKB Paranormal, and this week I'm very excited about our guests. I got Christy Sumner, Miranda Young, who are most well-known probably to a lot of people from the old historic Scott County Jail. Ladies, welcome to Life Beyond Six Feet. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. I've been I've been trying to get you guys on for a whole minute, but like I was saying, you y'all, y'all stay so busy, it's been kind of hard, but I'm glad we finally got it worked out. So so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda dive right in and just kind of go bounce back and forth between you two for a minute. So Miranda, since you're on my screen at the moment, I'm gonna start with you. How long have you kind of been interested in the paranormal? Uh well, I've been interested, like most people, I've been interested for a very, very long time since I was a kid. Um, mine mostly stems from the storytelling aspect of things. Uh, you know, spent a lot of time with my grandmother as a child listening to different stories about uh, the paranormal, the as we call them up here in uh, East Tennessee, mountain haints, <laughs> and uh, and then spending a lot of time uh, with my dad driving around to different locations. He would share stories essentially about locations, ghosts of the past, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, you know, so I had an interest from that point with folklore and legends and the storytelling side of things really since I was a kid. Right. So, so like kind of most all of us, we've all kind of had that same interest kind of as a young age. So, so Chris, what about you? What kind of got you, when did you kind of get interested in this whole thing? Uh, sort of the, the, at the same time, you know, we've all, my sisters and I, we've always had a fascination with the paranormal, a belief in the paranormal. Um, but we really didn't, um, you know, really delve into it up until about 2013. Uh, we always said to ourselves, if we could go on a paranormal investigation, we would do that. And uh, we had a girl's trip lined up. All my sisters, we live in different parts of the country. So we had a girl's trip lined up in uh, the end of 2013 to Moundsville, West Virginia. And mm-hmm. uh, it was it was just something that we were going to meet there because that's where my mom was from and she right. told us a history about that and um and our grandpa was a prison uh, guard at moundsville state penitentiary there in, uh-huh. in moundsville and so it's something we wanted to see and we had a family friend that sat on the board of that facility and he said while you're here why don't you stay the night in the penitentiary and see if you can connect with our resident spirits so we did a very rudimentary investigation of that facility it just take uh, took some digital voice recorders a couple of night vision video cameras a couple of just digital cameras cameras but we left that experience with what we felt was compelling paranormal evidence and uh so then after that we really decided to formulate soul sisters paranormal and see what else we could find all right well you just kind of answered my next question so (laughs) so because i was going to ask when do you decide to actually begin investigating so i'm guessing it would be 2013 around there so Mm -hmm. so miranda miranda what about you when did you kind of decide to actually start investigating this stuff uh, same thing as uh, a little bit over a uh, little bit over 12 years ago, um, a guy that I work with, he saw my background in photography and design and uh, and marketing. And so he essentially reached out to me to look at some different photos that his team had captured while they were doing investigations. And so started looking at those photos and went on my first investigation sort of as a payback for looking at those photos. <laughs> and so um the investigation went great. It was at a local bar and marina in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And so um, we did that and then did a couple more investigations, looked at some more photos and then ended up uh, getting invited to become a member of the team. And so I was a member of the team for about eight years before I went off on my own. All right. And and, and that local bar and marina, that wouldn't be Hell's Bar Dam, would it? No. No, it would not. OK, I no. was completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, it's it was a it's it's actually it was actually a personal okay. uh, place there. Yeah, down in Chattanooga. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So on that very first investigation, like, what did you have with you, like yourself? What did you bring along for the journey? For me, I t- I basically just took a recorder as well as a camera, uh, and just an old digital camera was what I took. The team had a whole lot of different pieces of equipment because they were pretty established. I think they had been investigating for about six or seven years before they invited me on the team or before they invited me to the investigation. And they were the type of team that they reached out to different professionals in the field. Um, You know, they 
reached out to different people who were um, like professors and photography experts and different people in the science community to really go in and try to validate a lot of their evidence. So it wasn't unusual that they reached out to me in the beginning to look at the photos. Um, but um, I'll tell you, the first time I heard that disembodied voice, had the flashlights going and heard my first EVP, <laughs> um, it was something, you know, you see it on TV. Right. I've seen it on TV for years, but just really didn't know what to expect. And right after that, I mean, it was, it's it's pretty surreal whenever you actually experience it for right. the first time. And and I think that's kind of initially what gets you hooked is that very first experience. You're like, oh man, I was like, I, I want more of this. So I, I think everybody kind of would be in agreement to that. That first, whether it be a first EVP or disembodied voice or whatever it would be, that's, like, that's what hooks you, I think. So and so on that first initial investigation, Chris, up at Moundsville, like what some of the stuff you guys captured while, while you were up there? Well, the, the interesting thing about us is we are an all female team. So mm -hmm. we captured a few disembodied voices that were pretty recognizable as male, which again was, is very interesting to us because we can pretty quickly rule out any of us. So there right. we go. It's, it's unexplainable. Um, we're capturing some great footsteps. Um, the upstairs infirmary area uh, where the doctor's offices were and all of that, their access, that floor is accessed on either side by these big steel and concrete uh, stairwells. And so all of us were sitting in, upstairs on that second level and we knew we had complete control of that environment. We we're the only people there, but yet we're hearing footsteps running up these stairwells to the point where we thought something was an actual person was going to materialize in the darkness. Oh. Um, so we were saying things like, it's time to take your medicine, come on up. Um, and you would hear boom, 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 boom. Like, oh, wow. like these steps are coming up uh, <laughs> in response to what we were saying. So that was pretty interesting. Now we've investigated Moundsville twice. And mm -hmm. the second time we went back about a year and a half later. And so we had some more equipment at that, at that point, K2 right. meters, some static cameras and such. And uh, at, at that that point we were capturing different disembodied voices we were being touched um had an amazing k2 session in uh in the cell of red snyder where the spirit of red snyder is said to to um house so that was pretty interesting so for us moundsville um will always be one of those locations that um is really a hotbed of, of unexplained activity right and and that, that's that's one of those places hello sally <laughs> <laughs> there she goes <laughs> that, that's that's one of those places that's been on my bucket list for a while and hopefully Hopefully the team can get up there at some point. Mm -hmm. So, so well when, so when <clears throat> you said, uh, you know, you mentioned you have a team with your sister, Soul Sisters Paranormal. When did that kind of form? Did it kind of form after Moundsville, or was that kind of kind of before? Or when did it kind of form? Um, well, since we're sisters, you know, we've, we've always been together, but the team really formed after Moundsville because Moundsville was really just a girl's trip. We wanted to do something different, something mm -hmm. unique, and we had that opportunity. And then when we had those experiences, it was like, okay, there's something to this. Right. And so what we wanted to really do was, to the best of our ability, try to elevate the paranormal in a more professional light from this subculture type of a mentality up into a more professional conversation. And so because my sisters and I, we come from a research background background. Um, I think that we go in with that healthy skepticism, i.e. trying to debunk first. And I, I think that really allows us to, to have this conversation where we say we've we've controlled for all of these things. Um, and, and what we're left with are those things that are unexplainable. So it, it, the formulation of Soul Sisters really occurred after Moundsville. And since then, you know, every investigation has been a, a learning experience, even, right. you know, the last one that we did, we're always learning and, and, and kind of um, integrating different techniques and different theories into our research. Right. Uh, that, that's, that's what's up. So, so Moundsville essentially kind of, because what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of catapulted us into yeah, this entire yeah, endeavor. Yeah. So <laughs> just kind of like us, except a, a different prison, we, we kind of, you know, cut our teeth at Brushview Mountain. So we kind of have that similarity there, getting our starts at a, at a big huge prison so mm -hmm. now Miranda you said you you, you was with your that, that one team for quite a few years before you kind of ventured off on your own and you kind of formed Ghost Biker Explorations mm -hmm. now kind of what was the idea behind that when you first initially wanted to do that so so basically you know we were investigating somewhere at least once a month mm -hmm. if it wasn't a commercial location it was a residential did a lot mm -hmm. of those down the Chattanooga area and North Georgia southern Kentucky area 
And so I found that a lot of the time I was going out on my own, on my motorcycle, uh, really doing more urbex and um, taking a lot of photos, putting a lot of that out on social media. I was doing a lot of that on my own. Even when I had business trips, I would try to arrange that around specific, you know, arrange places uh, around the trip. So I kind of got to talking to a friend one time about um, the fact that I was actually going to ride my motorcycle to an investigation that we were doing in downtown Chattanooga. And I was talking about just how calming it is, how grounding and everything. And, you know, she was like, you know, I would watch that if that was a show. And then my other friend, Josh, he was like, you know, you really should be documenting your travels and stuff rather than just doing it through photos, doing it on video mm -hmm. and really putting it out there as as a branded show. And so I sat there, kicked around the idea, decided how I wanted to do it, being that my background is marketing. Uh, my mind's always going in that capacity of right. how can I brand this? How can I market this? And so designed my logo, designed how I actually wanted the, the season to look or the series to look and realized I wanted it to be like a season. And rather than just putting out an episode after each investigation and being kind of kind of random with it, I wanted to do it, release it at a certain time mm -hmm. with a build up and lead up with with trailers and uh, with uh, different types of of things to build the momentum. Right. And so I really didn't tell anybody that I was doing this. I continued investigating with the team and did the branding, got it set up the way I wanted, even filmed a couple episodes. And then I just did this big blitz and blast about coming out with it. And because I was so busy with the season and trying to market that, get that out there, um, I really didn't feel like I had the time to devote to the team because I was doing their marketing. I was doing their design and also putting their videos together. Right. And so um, we mutually, uh, I mean, we had a very uh, cordial uh, parting. And uh, so I went, tried to see how uh, how Ghostbiker would, would move forward. And after uh, after that first season, it took off really quick and... I had, you know, sponsorships from Harley Davidson and different uh, options to go and speak at different locations. And so now we just wrapped up season five and uh, recording on season six now. So it's uh, it's gained a lot of momentum and, and really a, almost a lifestyle change. <laughs> right. I, I imagine yeah. so. And I, I haven't got to watch all the seasons. Yeah, I, I've watched a few here and there when I actually have free time. Um between work and, and, and kids and, and, and doing this and investigating, it's hard to really find any, any free time, but I have watched a few episodes and it just kind of keeps you drawn in like wanting more. So, and, and props to you for continuing to do that. So thank you. So when did you two ladies like officially meet for the first time? <laughs> well, um, officially we met four years ago. Um, when, uh, Miranda released her first season, uh, it was something that I, uh, you know, through mutual friends on Facebook and stuff mm -hmm. I found and I started following and I really liked her style. Uh, I liked the fact that she was very, um, in tune to the historical narrative of these locations. Uh, she rode a motorcycle, which I ride a motorcycle. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty interesting to watch those, those episodes. And so, Actually, on on New Year's Day, I uh, I wrote her a, a message, an email, and I just said, "Hey, congrats on the season, um, uh, very interesting, and uh, good luck going forward." And so she answered, and we had this really cool um, dialogue back and forth for about a month or so right. um, on uh, on email, just get, you know, kind of talking about different things and trying to come up with different collaborations that we could do. And um, so then we met in North Carolina in April and did our first collaboration investigation at Henry River Mill Village. Got to do a lot of motorcycle riding there in North Carolina. Nice, nice. Yeah, absolutely. And so then um, she followed that up with a trip to Florida because that's obviously where I'm from. So she came down to Florida. We did some more collaboration investigations down there and uh, really just formulated a, a great friendship. So I really like her style. I like her marketing, her business sense and all of that. And so that's what kind of catapulted us into what we do now. Right, and and it's and it's kind of an easy, uh, 
easy way to remember when you first kind of started talking because the very first day of the year. So that's, <laughs> it was, that, that, it was. That's, yeah, that's kind of a, that's a real easy way to remember the front anniversary. So yeah, exactly. Maybe that's why, you know, one day I knew I'd have old timers <laughs> or something. But, uh, right. <laughs> like, well, and it, and it really was cool because uh, I had been following the videos that she and her sister and their team had been putting out because um, I'm only 30 minutes away, grew up 30 minutes away from Brushy Mountain. Mm -hmm. And so I had seen their investment investigation and I too I loved the way that they had put things together with really highlighting the histor the historical stories about the location and that being first and foremost when it comes to that with the investigation being second I, I really liked their style and so it was really interesting when she reached out because it's like well that's cool you been watching my show but I had in turn been watching yours as well so right. the opportunity to be able to collaborate and then Really, you know, you can watch a person investigate. And I, speaking for myself, I'm very, very particular about who I collaborate with and who I work with. Um, mm. It's really hard to get a good team put together. Um, you know, the team I was on, they had a great chemistry and a great uh, connection. And so, so I'm always, when you go into these situations and these locations, you just never know what you're going to be experiencing. Right. And sometimes you can put yourself in a bad situation if you're surrounded with the wrong people. Absolutely. And so that was the thing, you know, I was instantly confident whenever we went to investigate together, because that was our first time meeting period mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I would feel comfortable in this type of situation because this person is not, you know, uh, a demon seeker or, you know, right. something of that nature. And so, um, so it was, it was really cool. And it was just an instant friendship at that point that uh, I would have never dreamed would have uh, turned into, you know, a business <laughs> partnership. Right. right. And, and, and that's, that's what I'm fixing to dive into right now. So obviously it's a great friendship, you know, great connection, great investigation partners. Whose initial idea was it, about the historic Scott County jail. Like I know Miranda or yeah, Miranda, you kind of grew up close to it. So it was kind of your initial idea to say, Hey, let's check this place out, see what we can do. Or was it kind of like a mutual thing? Like whose idea was it to kind of get in there and get this thing kind of started? Well, well, we go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, we've <laughs> always, you know, since we've kind of investigated together over the, the couple of years that we really formed our friendship, we had talked about the idea of a location, of getting a location, um, of really helping to preserve that historical narrative of a location and use it as what we would call a paranormal research center. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, during and, and a little bit after COVID, um, some things happened and, uh, and, and Miranda said, well, why don't we go look at the historic Scott County Jail and then, you know, go ahead and tell them the rest of the story there. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where I'm from. I grew up five minutes from the jail. And right. so um, <clears throat> so I was very familiar with the jail. And so like like Christy said, we had talked about forming a company uh, in a uh, tourism capacity. Um, and so we had talked about that. And so the jail, I, I knew that it had actually been. Um, that it had been abandoned for the time that it had. I didn't know what was going on in there. And through an official there in the community, um, he he confirmed there was nothing going on. And so, yes, yeah, so it was one of those things where I knew that to do this right, that basically it was too much work for one person mm -hmm. to do. But not sure if it was enough for two, you know, and, and I didn't know completely uh, what um, Christy's situation was going to be like. Uh, so I just pitched it out to her that like, hey, why don't we just check on it? Because there's nothing going on with it right now. And so we actually sat down. We did reach out to the mayor there in the community, ask if we could come and take a tour yeah. of it. Because again, we st we had these ideas, but we weren't really sure how how broad we wanted to do this, and so um, we actually when we when we met with the mayor, we sort of had a small mini business plan because I think we had had what maybe two weeks to yeah. Yeah. So we had had two weeks that we sat down before we met with him. When we went in there, we had an impromptu meeting. Basically, he was like, can you come back tomorrow and present to the board? We asked if we could maybe wait till the next week or next month's meeting and really get everything together. And so 
as soon as he agreed and said that was was fine, I mean, we, you know, we hit the pavement running at that point and and did a full business plan complete with uh, logo designs, phases, uh, numbers. I mean, it was a very, very intense. It was an over an hour long presentation that we had. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah. And so we went in and presented to the uh, town alderman and uh, they they love the idea. And so we. It was one of those things you hope they say yes, but then it's like, okay, now we got to execute. Now they said yes. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly. like, oh, they said yes. Um, yeah. and, and, and so it, it's really been an interesting progression. Uh, you know, Miranda has a great background in marketing and design and advertising. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mine comes more from the research mindset, from the a, a little bit of the business standpoint. I've never owned a business, but, you know, I've worked in in several, um, you know, in international businesses. And so it was, it's been a very interesting progression, right? You've got to learn all of these things, you know, sales tax and business licenses and, uh, you know, forming different partnerships and marketing. And so for us, it, it's really been interesting to see the growth from where we started um, with just a few displays here in the jail and a vision Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, we've got people writing magazine articles about us, doing podcasts about us and stuff. So it's, it's very, it's been a very interesting journey so far. Right. And And it's, um, go go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, we knew we didn't want to essentially just be like, okay, here's this location all we're going to do is open the doors for paranormal teams to come. You know, we knew that we did not want that to be the case. We wanted something that would be all encompassing Mm -hmm. for anybody, whether they be a true crime enthusiast, a history buff or a paranormal investigator. We wanted something for everyone to really let this build, give this building a new life and let it live up to the potential that we knew that it could do. Right. And and it's definitely been a success a success for you gals and 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 i think that's awesome of 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 what y'all wanted to do with that building now when you first decided on this location did you know that it was haunted had you heard rumors of it of being haunted have you did you actually get to go in and do an investigation like how did you pick this place of all the places you could have chose well i i was actually the first to investigate it back in 2014 so the the jail closed back in 2008 mm-hmm. and it sat vacant. And so when I was with the team of uh, the executive that was uh, there, that was my contact in the community, he actually encouraged to see and spoke to the current mayor at that time and was able to get us into the location. And so did an investigation and got some really cool activity at that on that particular night. And then I know there have been a couple teams that had come in right after from 14 up until when we opened it, but it was just very few, I think maybe three or four teams had come in. And so, so personally I knew it was haunted, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of one of those things, Christy, and she can kind of expand on it, but it's one of those, when you start doing this, it's like, I can tell you and play for you the experiences that I had, but Please be haunted. Yeah, <laughs> please be haunted. I mean, <laughs> when that first team booked and uh, and and it was like, okay, this is our very first team. We're so mm-hmm. excited. It's like, oh, please. You know, I don't know if it's right to pray to God to have something haunted, but we did. We're like, please have <laughs> right. some spirit activity. And you, and, and you know, to Miranda's point, she had told me that you know she did the investigation. She played me some of the EVPs that she captured, and they were pretty intense. Um, so that really led me to believe that with the longevity of this building, it was built in 1904. As Miranda said, it was an operation until 2008. So just that historical longevity has to lead to something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of the the stories behind it, the the murders, because we've had murders here, the lynchings, the, the right. suicides and all of that that have happened here, you, you have a feeling that there's something going on. And then you know, we had deputies come to us and say, hey, I don't believe in that. But when I worked there, we had this happen. Um, some I'm sitting in the former dispatch office now, and some of the dispatch would, would talk, pull us aside and say, hey, I don't believe in uh, in paranormal but when i was on the elevator something coughed in my ear and so right. i never rode the elevator again so things like that and, and again that really bolstered our confidence that there was mm-hmm. something going on here um but when those first when the first team came in and, and they were kind of blown away and then every subsequent team after that mm-hmm. has has found something interesting um mm-hmm. you know some more so than others but I, I don't think there's really been one team that has left here that said this is an absolute dud 
Um, right. You know, they've, they've at least gotten something that's uh, in, in their minds and ours unexplainable. Right. And some of yeah. these experiences have even built on each other, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, where they'll come in and somebody will get something that is giving us more pieces of the puzzle to the history that we're able to go and validate. Uh, it's 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 also fascinating, too, because we did spend a lot of time because we had the keys a couple months before we actually opened because mm -hmm. we had to get the museum together. Right. We spent a lot of time going in and really talking and communicating with the spirits, sharing with them what we're doing. Because, again, this location's been closed for 15 years right. at this point. So, you know, all of a sudden we're coming in and, and doing things. It's it's we wanted to really state our intentions and really just kind of familiarize with the tools and that sort of thing. And I think that that experience really paid off rather than just going in and just instantly investigating mm -hmm. and putting them in a position, but really talking to them. And I don't, it's, it's weird to say forming a bond or a relationship with the spirits, but you know, we do know a lot of the time when we talk to them, who we're talking to a lot of the right, time or right. the way they're responding. So I think that that really paid off taking that extra time and really explaining what we were doing. Right. Yeah. And, and like I've been saying, you know, what, what, what y'all have done with that building is just, just amazing from the, the museum standpoint to now the escape room. And of course the paranormal side of it is just, it's an amazing thing you guys have done. And when I first, you know, caught wind of, uh, of the location and i seen where y'all were you know doing donations and stuff to be displayed in the museum i was like mm -hmm. you know I, i've got this hat of my best friend who was an officer and who was you know killed in the line of duty i was like it's just sitting in my closet at in my mom's house just collecting dust mm -hmm. and i'm like i think it'd be cool to donate that that way you know his story's kind of out there and and his legacy can kind of be inside that building too and that way you know more people can learn about about his story and everything mm -hmm. and so when you know i seen that I, I jumped up the opportunity and i still can't thank you guys enough for for allowing me to donate that hat to you guys you know that really meant a lot to me so mm -hmm. and well thank you for doing it um yeah you know to miranda's point when when we first sat down and, and started doing this it, it wasn't something that we're just going to open this paranormal investigators the building has a history the building has a uh, unique characteristic. It has a story in and of itself outside of the paranormal. So we always knew that whatever we did, the history was going to be the driving factor. And that's what we assured the mayor mm -hmm. and the alderman as well. And right. so that's why we we took such care in, in getting these articles and getting these artifacts and getting these donations and such, because we want people to come in from the, you know, the town, from the community as a tourist and, and, and say, wow, I just thought I was going to go see this old building, but there's so much more. Right. And so, you know, your donation is is um, housed in what we call our law enforcement appreciation room. Mm -hmm. So we recognize law enforcement officials from across the country. And, you know, to be able to display his hat is something that's very touching and moving for us. And uh, again, a, a conversation starter because it is something it, it's not, you know, law enforcement isn't just here in Scott County, obviously right. mm -hmm. nationwide. And, and we want to recognize all of those law enforcement officials. Right. And uh, like I said, it, it's it's meant a lot to me and, and the team as a whole because, you know, that was, you know, mine and Josh is one of our best friends growing up. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so, so the jail to me you know, holds, holds a lot of special meaning to me and, and the team as a whole, not just for the paranormal side of it. We're going to get into that in just a second, but just, you know, what you guys ha have done as a whole to help remember him as well. So, so now back to the paranormal side, I kind of got a little emotional there for a second. Um, so what's some of the best evidence mm -hmm. that's been caught in the jail, not just by you guys, just but but by any teams that's come in there? Because I know you guys have caught some stuff and, and some other teams have caught some pretty wicked shit. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's some of the best stuff you guys have seen? <clears throat> You know, it's it's interesting because it, it's not just EVPs that are captured here. It's, um, you know, it's it's shadow figures, it's objects moving, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, and it's also interesting in and of the fact that the building almost wants to talk to us right. and tell us stories that we didn't even know. And so for me, I think one of the most interesting captures was by a team that um, was in the room across the hall from me, what we call our, our main museum room, mm -hmm. and they have they had an obelisk. And, um, 
um, if you know what the Ovilus is, it had stored bank. And so, but very rarely in my experience using it, will it say the same word multiple times in, su in succession? Right. And so um, this said anvil, the word anvil um, three times. And so mm. the team, Miranda was there that night. So the team asked Miranda, what does the word anvil signify? And it just so happened is very coincidental, but it just so happens that that morning, we had gotten the an advanced copy on a book written about the jail, and it's a it's a factual book written by a fi uh, written from a fictional character standpoint, mm -hmm. and so this fictional character is telling the history of the jail as fact, right. and so that fictional character's name was Anvil Clemens in the oh, book. Wow. And they didn't know that. And, and we had just thumbed through it. And so we didn't read the book or anything. We had just thumbed through it. The team certainly didn't know that. Right. And so Miranda contacted the author and said, why did you use the name Anvil as this character? And it was because when a lynching occurred here in 1933, the <clears throat> mob came in and beat the jailer and beat him so badly that somebody said it looked like he'd been beat by an anvil. And so his nickname became Anvil, and we did not know that. And so to be able to have the jail tell us this, essentially tell us this story, right. that to me is fascinating. It, it is pretty wild. Yeah, the author was blown <clears throat> away. I mean, he was absolutely blown away because there, there was no way, when the book wasn't out, and there was no way that people knew who this actual character was, but a lot of the events that happened when these lynchings occurred at the jail happened, a lot of the violence happened right there in the very front entrance of the jail. And mm -hmm. so incidentally, this team actually captured that right there in the front part of the jail. So we always tell teams when they come in that it's like, I know the obelisk can spit out a lot of random words. Mm -hmm. So can some of these other uh, devices. But to really take note of that, look at the subtleties and look at some of the things that may not seem as important or may not seem to make sense as in when it starts screaming demon or when it starts <laughs> right. screaming some of these words, um, really look at what it's saying and take time to look at the articles, take time to look at the names on the timeline, take time to come to us ask some questions because you might be pleasantly surprised at the mm -hmm. way some of the things tie in. And those seems to be the way that the jail really wants to communicate with us when we have people come in. I mean, when we take note of these things, mm -hmm. when people at, give us names, give us things. So if we can't tie it to anything immediately, <clears throat> we've got a log of it. And so when somebody comes in and they're like, Oh, well, when I worked here, in, you know, from 1978 to 1984 or whatever, they'll go and list some of the different things that happened. And we're constantly getting pages in the book that we're able to go and say, oh, well, that actually kind of makes sense. Or they'll give us a name or something. So we're always kind of looking at that and really being able to put a lot together just from the things that these paranormal teams have captured. Right. And, and and there's been everything from video to audio to pictures captured there, which I think is really cool. Um, I, I think one of the, the coolest things that um I can't I can't remember her name. I want to say it was Vicky. Vicky Cap yes. Mm -hmm. Capture that accidental EVP, mm -hmm. you know, there yeah. there in the drunk tank when she was just using the restroom. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh that was some of the wildest shit I'd heard. I was like, that is like clear as day. And I was like, that's, mm -hmm. that's insane. And uh -huh. uh, it blew us away. I thought Absolutely. that was when, when y'all shared that, I was like, I, I showed my wife and she was like, that's crazy. And that's before, you know, she had got to come there. So that made her wanted to come even more. And <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I think, I think what I love the most about the spirits that we have there at the jail is the fact that they are very intelligent. They're mm -hmm. very, very intelligent. They're very aware and they're very, they're very watchful. I mean, we do have the guy on the second floor who likes to watch people sneak up behind them and appear in pictures behind them. But as a whole, it's, I'm always fascinated with the fact that you're never alone there and right even though they may be kind of quiet and not necessarily show themselves when we're, when we're giving tours, when we're doing investigations and stuff, you'll get an EVP or a disembodied voice or something that mm -hmm. indicates the fact that they're not only aware of what's going on, but that they can actually see and hear 
some of the things that's that's going on around them. And to right. me, that's that's so impressive for a new location mm-hmm. and also for um, one that I, I think that, you know, kind of underestimated when you have these really big locations that are very well known. Right. It's it's kind of like our guys and gals there at the jail are like, you know, hold my beer, you know, let right. me let me show you. you <laughs> know? Exactly. And, right. and, you know, it, it's funny. And, and you may have even done it, Damien, when you came. A lot of investigators, they'll they'll come up um, onto the jail and they'll say, wow, it's a lot smaller than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we've had people do lives out out front and, and they say uh, it's not as big as I thought. It's just a small little jail. And then they leave here with a much different perspective. Mm-hmm. And so we like to say it's a, it's a little location that has a big paranormal punch because yep. there are things that we just cannot explain. I mean, the, the, the evidence that you captured, Mm-hmm. Right. Just it's it's unexplainable how that happens. Uh, and, and that, like I said, can be said for almost every team that has come in here. It right. may not be something like a picture flying off the wall, uh, but it could be as subtle as an EVP. But to Miranda's point, they're intelligent EVPs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And- um, I mean, not to not to interrupt, but like mm-hmm. last night we had a team and of course, they're still going through their evidence. But um, Sheriff Richard Ellis, he is a, a, a very tall guy, very tall, big guy. And the one of the guys from the team last night was also six, eight. And oh. so he was up there in the area and they got this very cool EVP while they were asking some questions. Very clear it says, um, you look similar. Oh, wow. And so, you know, obviously somebody is aware, somebody, you know, they, they know. So it just things like that, just fascinating. Yeah. And right. just to set that story up for the listeners, um, Richard mm-hmm. Ellis was one of our sheriffs who was killed right outside the front door in 1925. Mm-hmm. Um, we do think that his spirit is very active here. To Miranda's point, he was um, six, eight, six, nine, very tall, mm-hmm. formidable guy. He was also a Baptist preacher. And so we have trigger items. Um, trigger music seems to be a, a, a very um, interesting phenomena. When you play that, you seem to get a response from him. So the, the team last night, when you have a very tall individual, I mean, that's probably one one of the taller men that have come mm-hmm. in here mm-hmm. um, to have an EVP saying you look similar. It's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty wild. And, you know, you, you mentioned, a you know, uh, one piece of evidence of, of a picture flying off the wall. I, I've seen this video and it's just, <laughs> it's just, it, you know, um, I, I tell all kinds of people about that and I show them the video and they're just like, you know, Holy cow. And, and, and especially when it's slowed down and you see everything else that happens, mm-hmm. you know, I, <clears throat> I remember when that happened, you know, we heard that disembodied female voice from the hall say, help. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, what, you know, what the hell was that? And so we walk out or I'll walk out and open the door, you know, say hello. And then that picture goes flying. And of course, you know, from the people that seen the video, you know, I'm dropping F bombs and everything. Cause <laughs> you know, it scared the hell out of me when it happened. Of course. And, uh, you know, me and Josh watch it back right there, like right because I stopped recording. I'm like, man, we gotta make sure we capture this and, and all this other stuff. So we watched it a couple of times before we went down and got Miranda. And I'm like, Did you just hear the commotion going on? She's like, No, I didn't hear anything. You know, I've got these headphones on, I don't know what's going on. And so I was like, Look at this, and I throw the camera at her, and she was like, Oh my gosh. And so, you know, we went up there for what, probably 20 minutes trying to debunk it in the moment. Yeah. And we couldn't mm-hmm. recreate it. And and what's crazy is, you know, that same picture had fallen earlier in the night. And, you know, we captured audio of it, but we didn't see it happen. And so when we seen where it was laying, I was just kind of like, well, you know, maybe somebody was in here during the day and they were kind of messing with it and it wasn't hung up very good. I was like, maybe it just slowly, you know, came off the wall. And so, but when we actually captured it and you know, it does that flip in the air. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, how do you explain that? And I remember Miranda telling me, you know, that she called you at like 3.30 in the morning. She saying, did. She's yeah. like, I'm coming over. You need to watch this. And so yep. so when when I know your initial reaction, but it's been a whole a whole minute, like what was your initial reaction, Miranda, when when we showed you this video? Um. Well, I mean, you know, it's we don't typically have boat pictures falling off the walls. <laughs> so it's I mean, we've 
it, it, it's a unique situation there at the jail with the way that the walls are. Mm -hmm. Some of them were able to drill into because they are solid stone walls, concrete right. walls. Some of them are, are Velcroed. And mm -hmm. when we Velcro them on, it's not just a little tab. I mean, it's corners and sides. And that piece was a Velcroed piece. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't one that you could just, you know, and when you actually go and listen to the video, you can hear the mm -hmm. rip coming off the wall. Um, you know, I was, I was pretty amazed. I was not surprised when you said that you heard help because I mean, that is a common thing mm -hmm. that we hear. It's a common thing that other investigators hear, but to have in seeing this, seeing what had happened because it was flipped, it was over four and a half feet from where it had fallen. Mm -hmm. And then going and watching the video and seeing the progression of things from help to all of the tools going off. And then seeing that happen, um, you know, it's, it's just a fantastic catch because mm -hmm. very, very rarely are you able to capture something like that, but also capture all of the other elements that goes into it to right. show that there's multiple things happening. Right. Mm -hmm. And in and, and all the stuff that you see after the fact, like mm -hmm. when I loaded it onto my laptop, I didn't notice any of that. And then when, you know, you sent me that first initial screen grab, you're like, you're not mm -hmm. going to believe this. I was like, what, what's mm -hmm. you fixing to show me? And then when you sent the video back, I was like, holy cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw yeah. in the beginning, of course, I recorded your screen first. Mm -hmm. And that was what I had showed Christy. And I saw what looked like an arm when that came off. But it's hard to tell because, you know, when you're recording a recording, mm -hmm. it, there's artifacts and stuff. So, right. um, you know. Christy, I know, was very compelled by it. So even the next morning, she goes in to try to look at other things that we may have missed in the debunking process. Mm -hmm. So once we got that file and was able to go in, really analyze that and see it in, I mean, literally frame by frame, it, it was, there's no mistaking that there's an arm there that you can see fling that. Right. I mean, there's no way that, there, there was no, no way, way it would have to... flipped. There's yeah. no way. There's no way it would have flipped. I mean, every every time something falls, it falls straight down. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, to Miranda's point, the sequence of events, every one of those things that you captured in and of itself would have been interesting. Mm -hmm. The 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 REM pod and the EDI box going off, the help that you heard, the shadow figure that runs past that quick shadow figure, uh, and then to have the the entire thing just come off the wall and flip. Um, in each one of those things is interesting, but to see them all, as Miranda said, in that series of progression, I mean, it's just a phenomenal piece of evidence for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And and it's still been our or, you know, our most compelling piece to date. And, you know, it's going to be hard to top that. But, you know, that's why yeah. we keep that's why you know these teams continue to do that, like because they want more mm -hmm. and more and more. And, you know, I find it interesting that you say, you know, always kind of pay attention to what your devices and stuff are telling, because during that night. You know, I tell a lot of people that the spirits that night were kind of toying with us all night up until the very end because everything that happened seemed to happen right when we stopped filming because we were getting ready to change mm -hmm. locations or right when we came in before we got everything set up. So it was kind of toying with us all night. And I remember um, we had went the sales uh, is in the top floor. We had went some of the sales and the, the EDI box had, had stopped at like 66.6. Mm -hmm. And it had stayed there for a good 10 minutes. And what we noticed is that the temperature changed, like when Josh put his handcuffs in front of it. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, let me just go down here to see if this thing is like malfunctioning because like it, it didn't change for a good 10 minutes. And what we found really intriguing is when we came down, you guys said, you know, when did this happen? I was like, you know, right before I came down, y'all said y'all were researching some story that y'all had just learned about pertaining to that number. Mm, yeah the at the uh, archive of the afterlife right yeah. and i was like that's you know that's one of those weird coincidences in a way but maybe it was telling us something and then uh, uh another um thing that we uh, always like to tell people is that uh, the obulus was more or less telling us to read one of these articles on the wall mm -hmm. because it was just spitting out you know like you said random words and at the time they weren't making any sense mm -hmm. and then I kind of started looking at one of these articles and I started noticing different words that it had spit out. And it wasn't just like your normal mm -hmm. everyday word. It was like words in this article. And I was like, 
hey, Josh was like, all these words this thing's been spitting out is in this article. And he was mm -hmm. like, well, maybe it's mm -hmm. wanting us to read it. And so he started reading it. And that I thought that was really cool, too. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that happens a lot. Uh, and we kind of tell teams to pay attention to that mm -hmm. because, you know, the articles that we have up are in some way related to the jail, um, mm -hmm. murders, mayhem, rape, uh, car accidents. And if you if you look through them, there's a connection to the jail. Either the perpetrator was housed here or mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the family member was housed here. Some some connection is right. to the jail. And so, you know, we have one article upstairs that when you you start to read it it seems to evoke some activity that we can't explain and and that's right. the one you're talking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um so, so that to me is extremely interesting to miranda's point earlier it just shows an intelligent level like they're right. they're sitting there listening to us read this right mm -hmm. and and you know we we were back there a, a second time a few months ago and i still you know haven't went through everything but but i remember some of the stuff that happened i remember you guys telling us to play you know, some gospel music on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, we'll, we'll try that. And so we had set Josh up, you know, in that hallway where the pitcher, you know, got went flying, set him up for the S's method. And I remember it coming through. It said my name. It said his name. And so I was like, okay, mm -hmm. well, they remember us. And so we're trying to figure out who it was that knocked this off. And I remember, I think we got a name like Rob or something like that. Finally came through and we kept getting a female name coming through. And, uh, when we finally decided to start playing some gospel music, because it kind of quieted down for a minute, I was like, well, he's still under. Let's play some of this music. See, and I don't know who who was, was in there at that time, but apparently they didn't want to listen to it at that point because I started feeling nauseous like right after I started playing. Like wow. to the point, like mm -hmm. I started getting kind of dizzy. I was like, we got to turn this off. I was like, because I was perfectly fine before that. And, and I remember we had a, uh, left the camera rolling after we went downstairs. I was like, man, I got to take a breather because that was, you know, pretty weird. And remember, I know there was a couple like odd knocks that we captured when there was nobody up there. And so, mm -hmm. so and I always tell people when I, when I see these Facebook posts, you know, what's some of the best places to go? Number one place I always list is the store Scott County Jail. <laughs> and, it, and it's not just for the paranormal activity, just everything you guys have done. It's, it's my favorite place that I've been to. Um, and like I said, well, it's for, and it's for multiple reasons, obviously, but, you know, it's always the top of my list. People's like, you know, what's the most active place you've been to? Historic Scott County Jail tops that list. Um, of course, and then, you know, I'll name some other ones, but that's always at the top of my list. And so with everything you guys, you know, have done there. So what is is, is in store for, for 2023, not just for the jail, but like for you guys personally, for your teams, for, for Ghost Biker, Soul Sisters, what's kind of 2023 looking like for you guys? Well, for Soul Sisters Paranormal, we have uh, several investigations already lined up. We've got a couple of speaking engagements as well. Um, most of what uh, I'm, I'm consumed with right now is the is the, host, the historic Scott County Jail. But, um, you know, we both said that when we started this, neither one of our teams would suffer. Um, mm -hmm. And so we do have several investigations lined up as Soul Sisters. Uh, we've got a couple of, uh, we've got an interesting collaboration in August that I'm really excited about. Uh, my twin sister and I, we go to Twinsburg every year, which is mm -hmm. the largest gathering of twins and multiples in the world so we go to right. twinsburg every august and so we've met some very interesting twins um there and so we've asked them to join us on an investigation so right. even though they're not paranormal investigators <laughs> it'll be interesting to have a right. few sets of twins in a location to see if we can do some interesting experiments so that's what we're going to do here um in august and then just really keep hammering away at the historic scott county jail all right Miranda, what about you uh, got a lot of different speaking events lined up. Uh, excited this year to be invited to speak in Gettysburg at the Battlefield Bash that's oh, coming nice. up in July. We're going to be going, um, Chris is going to be going with me and representing the jail. And so uh, we're going to be doing the jail plus go spiker. Uh, got several different Harley Davidson events, haunted motorcycle rides. Got those uh, planned coming up. And of course, filming season six, possibly some interesting things possibly coming up when it comes to season six but uh and definitely with the jail uh between all that you know the jail is um the jail's trucking right along got mm -hmm. some different e expansion exciting mm -hmm. announcement things that uh we hope we we keep kind of teasing about it but we're trying to get everything just right before we're able to make those announcements right so um Stay tuned for that because yeah. that, that's going to be a really big deal. But right. um, 
but yeah, just really trying to track away with all that and, and really excited because some of the states that I'm going to be speaking at this year, I've, I've got a speaking engagement at least um, one a month for the next little bit. So um, so very excited to be expanding to to different areas, sharing about the jail and sharing about Ghost Biker. All right. It, it, it's going to be a fun year for you guys. Uh, I can already tell. And with everything you Absolutely. got going on, I, I think it's just awesome how you just keep going and going and going like... <clears throat> I would be wore out. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are times when we were like, what are we doing here? But um, right. you know, to Miranda's point, some of the announcements that we're going to make be making here very soon, uh, I think are really going to intrigue paranormal investigators. Mm -hmm. And so be on the lookout for that because it is something that um, we're essentially building around that. It's not mm -hmm. just going to be solely for paranormal investigators, but um, it's something that they'll be able to take full advantage of. So we're very right. excited about that. Um, but to your point, it's just one of those things that we're always thinking about new and different ideas on how how we can, you know, help promote the jail, but also other locations as well. So right. um, we do have a lot of cool things coming up, but we can't thank you enough for, yeah. for your support and everything that right. you do to, to help promote us. So thank you. Well, like I said, anytime you know, I, I see those posts, that's, that's always the first place I list. And then, then I kind of go down my list of places that, I, that I've, I've, I've loved going, you know, Brushview Mountain has been one of my favorite places, Octagon Hall. Um, and now a place we recently went um, just a few months ago, the Hotel Metropolitan, it, it's ranked up there and mm -hmm. one of the most active places I've been now. So cool. um, if you gals have never been, you know, I would suggest heading up there one night because it, it was pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> Love so. to. Love to get up there. Yeah, we're 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 truly blessed with the location that the jail is in because, you know, I think it was kind of kind of joking with Chris the other day, you know, for anyone who's sports fans, we're kind of the SEC of the uh, paranormal here because, right. you know, between East Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, and right there in Northern Georgia, mm -hmm. you just have so many places oh, yeah. that are just fantastic, very close. So we're, we're very fortunate to be it, where we're at it, and be close to some, <clears throat> some of these big heavy hitters in the paranormal community. It's it's like if you want to take a paranormal road trip, you, know, mm -hmm. you don't have to go to, to like two or three states, and you can hit a ton of locations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and all mm -hmm. that are like super active, and then so <clears throat> if if people want to follow you guys along on social media, you know, Soul Sisters, Ghost Biker, and the Jail, like what what's all your different social medias for for all of your stuff. <laughs> So for Soul Sisters Paranormal, our website is www.soulsistersparanormal.com. We're also very active on Facebook under Soul Sisters Paranormal. And we'd love for you to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Soul Sisters Paranormal. Yeah, same here. Very active on Facebook under Ghost Biker Explorations. Do a weekly live stream every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And then also the seasons that drop every October, you can watch all the past seasons there on the Ghost Biker Explorations Facebook page, Ghost Biker Explorations YouTube channel, and www.ghostbikerexplorations.com. And then for, for the Historic Scott County Jail, it's www.historicscottcojail.com. And again, we're also very active on Facebook under Historic Scott County Jail. And on and on your website, you can book the investigations. You can buy mm -hmm. your escape room tickets mm -hmm. and and learn a little bit of the history too. So, so it's a it's all a all in one good spot. And I know you know you guys also do a live uh, podcast there from the jail too, which I know you're fixing to have to jump off and get ready to do that. So, like <laughs> I said, y'all are just so busy. And but you know you you guys have done an amazing job, and I'm I'm, I'm glad to have met you guys. And uh, and I always look forward to reaching out to you guys. You're always one of my top contacts when I, I, I'm oh. questioning something. I'm like, let, let me send this to Chris and Miranda and see what they what they what their take is. Because sometimes your opinion makes more sense than, than what what we could have come up with. So, because you've been doing it way longer than we have, so I always trust your your instincts and your opinions. So. Well, thank you, Damien. And, and again, thank you so much for your support of of both Soul Sisters and Ghost Biker as well as the Jail. It just it really does mean a lot. Absolutely, it really does. Like I said, really it's my, my 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 favorite place. Like I said, I'm I'm representing the hat you right are. now. So <laughs> it looks good. Um, it looks good. <laughs> so everybody, be sure to follow Chris and Miranda on their different socials. Be sure to check out the jail, even if you're not really into the paranormal. Go there for the history lesson. The 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 police and crime part of it is it, amazing. Escape room. I haven't got to do it yet, but it's it's on on the bucket list of things I want to do. So so again, Chris, Miranda, thank you guys, and we'll talk to everybody next time. Thank you.